Is Walmart hoarding PS5s? Did Sony just tease a black edition of the console? And did Sony just re-break a feature that they fixed in a previous update? Well, we're gonna find out in today's PlayStation news. And before we jump into it all, make sure you're PS ready by subscribing and setting your notifications to all. Every time it seems like things are getting better with being able to find a PS5, right when people are like, oh, the shortage might be turning around, it seems like there's some crazy news coming out that really just sets us all back to zero and makes it much, much harder like it was before. So a few videos back, we talked about Best Buy's total tech thing where you can skip the line to pre-order a PS5 for the measly cost of $200. We've also talked about GameStop service, Power Up Rewards. I think it's like Ultimate, that version of that system. If you have that, you can skip the line as well and buy a PS5, but it doesn't work very well from what I've heard. There's all these tricks and different things that these storefronts are doing to stop people from buying PS5s and scalping them. And we, the customers who just want to get PS5s are the ones suffering. Sounds about right. And now it looks like Walmart is joining in on the fun because there's a conspiracy theory going around. It's actually been going around for a while, but now there's a lot of evidence popping up that makes it feel less like conspiracy and more like reality. So basically for months now, there have been TikToks and tweets popping up from people saying that Walmart is hoarding PS5s. Like they'll go on the website, they'll see that PS5s are in stock, they'll get all the way through the checkout process, they'll be charged for a PS5, and then they'll go to the store to pick up their PS5 and they'll be told that the site was wrong and that they don't actually have any in the stores. But then some people have stuck around and noticed that employees are actually holding them back and selling them to their friends for more like the scalper prices, 750 bucks or more. Another thing people have noticed is a TikTok going around that shows a huge, massive Walmart warehouse saying, if you want to know where your PS5 is, it's in this warehouse and it's stacked floor to ceiling with PS5 consoles. And the thing that really turns this conspiracy theory into to reality other than that evidence, which I guess could be faked, right? Like this could all be taken and should be taken with a huge grain of salt, is that people who ordered PS5s as early as August still have not received them from Walmart. They have not shipped, they've been charged for the console, of course they got charged right up front, but they still don't have a PS5 in their hands, which is absolutely crazy, like I'd be pissed. And now that these videos are out there showing that Walmart does in fact have PS5s, along with the site saying that PS5s are in stock multiple times a week, and then they're saying, no, we don't have any. People People are obviously just getting really frustrated with this, and I completely understand. Honestly, what else is there to say other than this sucks? Like, it's getting to an insane level right now where stores are noticing that people are scalping these PS5s for $750, $850, $950, $1,000 at times, and they're saying, well, we want a little piece of that pie. We're not making a whole lot by selling these for $500. So they're doing these crazy things, like I mentioned earlier, charging people $200 bucks for a warranty they really don't want, and will probably never use just so they can skip a line and pre-order a PS5. Like honestly, it's just getting absolutely wild at this point and I don't really see an end in sight because we talked about in last week's video how Sony is pairing up with TSMC, the people who make these chips over in Taiwan, to get a new factory made to produce more chips just for Sony and probably other people that will have to pay a pretty penny to make that happen. But then you read the article and you see at the bottom that that factory is not even going to be open until 2023 and it's like, come on. We're in 2021, the console's almost been out for an entire year and there are still people who can't get them. Now I gotta give Sony credit here, they are doing a good job trying to get more consoles out there because I know you guys have heard this a million times, but if you take where the PS5 is at at this point in time and compare it with where the PS4 was at sales wise, there have been more PS5s sold at the same point in time. So obviously, even with everything happening, Sony is doing a really good job making PS5s. The issue seems to be with storefronts, getting them in people's hands because there's just so much money to be made on these things. And really, they can try all these different tactics that they want to stop scalpers, but at the end of the day, the only way it's going to stop is if they can get more PS5s out there because the more PS5s are out there, the more people who want them get them for retail price, that scalper price goes down and down and down until it just goes away entirely. Maybe like a couple bucks more, nothing crazy like that, and then scalpers obviously move on to the next thing, which is definitely going to be the PS5 Pro and the PS5 Slim. So guys, get ready for that one. And my tip here to get a PS5, which has worked for every console I've ever wanted, is to just know when Amazon is going to do the pre-order the first time and then just keep refreshing it until it shows up and you can add it to your cart. I've done this for every console ever, for the PS4, the Xbox One S, the Xbox One X, the PS4 Pro, the PS5, this Nintendo Switch and the Nintendo Switch OLED, like all these different consoles I was able to get just by showing up on the 
first day of pre-orders and pre-ordering on Amazon because it doesn't make any sense not to even if you might not buy the console because Amazon doesn't charge you until they ship unlike a lot of other stores out there. That's super frustrating to me that other stores charge you for the full amount at the time of pre-order even if you're like three or four months early, you know what I mean? And the funny thing about this Walmart situation is that it's completely random who actually gets their PS5s. Like some people who have ordered in August still don't have them, but people who ordered in September or October are able to get them in just a couple days. And then when the people who got them in August say, hey, I already paid for this thing. My order's been processing for literal months now. Walmart hits them back with, yeah, it's the manufacturer's fault. They're not making enough consoles. And it's like, no, it's your fault because you're not fulfilling the orders that you've already taken money for and you're giving PS5s to people who ordered after. It should go to the person who orders first, in my opinion, at least. I feel like that's just the most basic and smart way to do it. I mean, I don't know, guys. This is crazy. We're almost a full year out. It's going to be a while before these things are plentiful. So if you see one, I think at this point you should get it, even if it's like a digital one and you want a disc. I used to say like, wait for the one you want, but this far out, it's like we're getting to Wii levels of craziness and I don't see it ending anytime soon because unlike with the Wii, this isn't Sony holding back PS5s. They're trying to get as many out there, you know? And on top of all this Walmart PS5 craziness, it seems like their Black Friday event is going to be even crazier because this like ad leaked, I guess, for their Black Friday. And I don't know if it's 100% real, but when you look at it, you're seeing it on screen right now. It definitely seems real. And the thing that's standing out to people is that to get Black Friday deals or to even buy things on Black Friday, you're gonna need a service called Walmart Plus. And just like with Best Buy and GameStop, it lets you skip the line to buy a PS5, but this time it's going to be on Black Friday. So whenever they put up all their Black Friday deals, you get that tiny little extra benefit of being able to buy all the Black Friday stuff four hours early if of course you have Walmart Plus. Now Walmart Plus is $98 a year so if you want the chance to get a PS5 you're gonna have to pay a hundred bucks up front and the only benefits you get on top of that are free delivery from Walmart on online orders and free delivery from your local store if you buy stuff like groceries there. Now honestly that doesn't seem like that good of a value to me. I don't go to Walmart ever so I'm probably the wrong person to ask here but out of the three Walmart Walmart Plus, GameStop, Power Up Rewards, whatever, and Best Buy Total Tech. I think if you're going to go with any of them, go with the Best Buy one. It's 200 bucks a year, which is a lot, but if you have Apple products, it's worth it for those because any Apple product you buy from Best Buy, you'll get Apple Care Plus on it, which is like their extended warranty thing where if it breaks, you can get it replaced for free. So if you have like an iPad, an Apple Watch, an iPhone, and a MacBook, Apple Care Plus really starts to add up quick. So if you pay this 200 bucks up front, you get that Apple Care Plus, and then on top of that, you get a chance to buy a PS5. Or you could just save yourself all of this trouble and buy it from a scalper. The choice is yours. So now we gotta talk about this feature on the PS5 that was broken at launch and then was fixed and is now broken again. So back when the PS5 came out with games like Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, pretty much any game that also had a PS5 version and a PS4 version, if you put the PS4 disc into your PS5 and then selected the digital upgrade to the PS5 version, it would just continue to download the PS4 version. Black Ops Cold War specifically had the biggest issue with this where even if you would download the PS5 one, it would actually delete the PS5 one and install the PS4 one and then default to that. Like there was no way to just play the PS5 version of Black Ops Cold War. And when you contrast that with what Xbox is going on with smart delivery where you just go to the store or you put the disc in and the best version of the game just puts itself on your console, that made it look even worse on the PS5. But thankfully, Sony fixed that issue pretty quickly. They were able to figure it out with stuff like, I don't know, Spider-Man Remastered, Black Ops Cold War, Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Again, any game that had a PS4 and PS5 version with a free upgrade. But now that we have Ghost of Tsushima Director's Cut and Death Stranding Director's Cut, two games that originally launched on PS4 but now have PS5 versions that you have to pay to upgrade to, people are finding that even after they pay to upgrade their game, no matter what they try, their PS5 is just aggressively installing the PS4 version. Now they are able to also get the PS5 version as well, but with such limited storage space on the PS5, it is incredibly frustrating to these people who are having this happen to have the PS4 version keep re-downloading itself every time they put the disc in the console. And I'm assuming what's happening there is that the software is saying, oh, a new game that isn't on this console has been put into the disc drive, right? Because if you had the PS5 version of Ghost of Tsushima downloaded, you don't need the PS4 version, so you delete it, and then you have the disc with the PS4 version on it, and the console's like, yeah, 
I don't have this on me and the disc is in me, so I'm gonna like install it, right? Like it kind of makes sense. It's just, again, when you've got smart delivery working so well on the Xbox Series X, there's really no excuse for this issue to keep popping back up. But thankfully, while Sony attempts to fix this issue, a feature has been added to the PS5 where if it downloads the PS4 version in the background and you try to launch it by accident, it'll let you know, hey, you're launching the PS4 version of the game and you also have the PS5 one. So I think you're gonna wanna shut this down and go play that one. So I guess it's a baby step fix while they figure something out. So if you've been watching the channel for a little bit now, you know that the one thing I've wanted ever since the PS5 was announced is a black edition of the console official from Sony. And it seems like Sony is leading up to that because we've gotten the Pulse 3D wireless headset in black, and we've also gotten a midnight black DualSense controller. So honestly, the next thing they gotta do is just some black plates that you can pop on the side of your PS5. Now back when the PS5 came out, Dbrand actually beat Sony to the punch on this. They released dark plates that were honestly pretty affordable and they had a different pattern on the end inside and remove the PlayStation logo. But if you looked at the pattern on the inside of the plates, they had basically the PlayStation buttons. They had the circle, square, cross, and triangle, but they were drawn to look like different things, right? Like a little skull and crossbones, or like a speech bubble, or like a radioactive sign. Like they got a little clever with it, and they also told Sony to sue them. So Sony actually let it go on for pretty much an entire year, but just this past Saturday, they hit up Dbrand with a cease and desist and said, hey, you gotta stop making these dark plates. And Dbrand, said, yeah, we looked at our legal options and we're pretty confident that like we're not doing anything illegal here. We're in our rights. But they took the dark plates down and they said they'll be back with a new replacement option in a little while. Now, the fact that Sony let this go on as long as they did before hitting Dbrand with the cease and desist is making a lot of people think that the only reason they did it is because they have dark plates of their own coming out very soon. And we're coming up on the one year anniversary of the PS5. Sony probably wants to announce something to get hype back up again, especially since there's no big first party game this fall. It would make a lot of sense to me if they came out with a trailer just randomly like they always do that announced new plates for your PS5. And the first two colors I bet they'll start with are Midnight Black and Cosmic Red. You know, I feel like those DualSense options that we got over the summer were like a little bit of a teaser and now they're suing Dbrand. Honestly, guys, I'm feeling pretty confident that we'll either get new plates from Sony that we can just go to the store and buy for probably like 50 bucks or at the very least, they'll announce and release a new black edition of the console. Maybe, just maybe, Maybe with one terabyte of storage, you know, get that little bit of pro on top of the PS5, but they won't call it PS5 Pro. They're definitely gonna wait till next year for that. Another interesting layer here is that Sony doesn't seem to be going after all these other sellers that you see on Etsy or Amazon that have clear plates, all these different colors. You know, they're not necessarily up to the quality of Dbrand, which to me, I think would make Sony more upset, but they really don't seem to care all that much. There's just something about Dbrand that really pissed Sony off. And what I think that was, was obviously them daring Sony to sue them, right? They hit them with the cease and desist. They waited a year to do it after they made a bunch of money. But still, Sony was definitely like, all right, if we are making some dark plates and we want to make a statement about all these resellers and different people making their own dark plates, who are we going to slap with the cease and desist first? Well, we're going to go straight to the top and hit Dbrand because they ripped on us last year. But if you have a PS5 that's still white and you want to change the color, you might want to go ahead and start looking now. If Sony is about to start slapping all these other cheaper options with cease and desist, you might want to just go buy a set of a color you really like. I mean, in the long run, they could release their own, they could not, and it would really suck if they slapped cease and desist on everyone and then never release new plates for the console because they would just wanna sell a new version of it for $500. So right after I finished recording this segment, Dbrand actually came out with new dark plates. They're calling them dark plates 2.0 and the only difference is they have slots for the fans. They talked about why Sony was coming after them and really it ended up being because Sony didn't have design patents for the original plate on the side of the PS5, which is why Dbrand was so confident they couldn't be sued. So then Sony actually did go ahead and patent that design. So then they threatened to sue Dbrand. So Dbrand went back to the drawing board and changed the plates to add vents for the fan. And the cool thing about Dark Plates 2.0 is that even though they had to change the way they look to get away from this whole lawsuit thing, they actually added function by putting the fan vents on the sides. It increases airflow, which should improve thermals. It's pretty simple, but they didn't stop there. They said, because people are attached to the white color scheme, they also have a white color way of the dark plates. And then finally, they also offer a great version that's inspired by the PS1. But the last thing at the very end of the Reddit post where they announced all this is the light strips that they've created, which go perfectly over the light strips on the PS5 now. So if you want to change the color of your light strips, you can also check these out. And as for whether or not Sony will sue Dbrand in the future, they say they probably will, but this time they've created an original design for the plates and they have no basis to allege infringement. So Dbrand says if they want to try, they better be ready to pay legal fees. I'm not going to lie. 
I wouldn't be the one to poke Sony, but this is a cool move on dbrand's part. Anyway guys, that's all the PlayStation news I have for you today. Make sure you let me know what you think down in the comments below. And remember to subscribe and set your notifications to all if you haven't already. As always guys, my name is Jimmy Champagne and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.